there are two types of feedback systems, negative and positive. Negative feedback systems work at maintaining homeostasis by generating output that negates or opposes the stimulus, which returns the control condition back to its normal range. If the stimulus increases the controlled condition, negative feedback systems reverse the stimulus and bring the control condition back down to normal. However, if the stimulus decreases the controlled condition, negative feedback systems again reverse the stimulus and bring the control condition back up to normal. Negative feedback systems are the most common of the two feedback systems and work 24-7 to constantly regulate the body's daily activities in order to maintain a stable state over time. Let's take a look at an example of a common negative feedback system, the regulation of blood pressure. We're going to use the same feedback system components that we reviewed in podcast 1-4. Blood pressure is the amount of force generated by blood as it pushes against the blood vessel walls, as shown in this cross-section diagram. A stimulus like the stress one feels before an important test, causes the heart to beat faster, which increases blood pressure or controlled condition. There are specialized nerve receptors in the walls of blood vessels, called baroreceptors, that are sensitive to changes in blood pressure and detect the increase. The baroreceptors generate input in the form of nerve impulses to the control center, which is the brain. The brain takes in this input, processes the information, and generates output in the form of nerve impulses to the effectors, which are cardiac muscles in the heart and the smooth muscles in the walls of blood vessels. The heart responds by decreasing the rate of contraction of its cardiac muscle cells, and the smooth muscles in the blood vessels dilate or increase their diameter, which results in a decrease in blood pressure. This drop in blood pressure then feeds back to the baroreceptors, which detect this decrease, and the controlled condition of blood pressure is returned back to its normal homeostatic range. Positive feedback systems are the opposite of negative feedback systems in that their responses intensify the strength of the stimulus rather than reverse it. Positive feedback systems are not as common as negative feedback systems, but are incredibly important when they occur and will continue working until they run through completion. A common example of a positive feedback system is childbirth. The first labor contractions of childbirth push the baby's head into the mother's cervix, which is the lowest part of the uterus, or womb. These labor contractions act as the stimulus that increases the stretching of the cervix, which is the controlled condition. The receptors in this feedback system are specialized nerve cells in the cervix called stretch receptors that send input in the form of nerve impulses about this increased stretching to the control center, which is the brain. As a result of this input, the brain releases a hormone called oxytocin into the bloodstream as its output. Oxytocin causes the effectors, the muscles of the uterus, to contract even more forcefully than before. This results in the baby being pushed further down the uterus which further stretches the cervix. This increased stretch then feeds back to the stretch receptors, which causes the brain to release even more oxytocin, which triggers even stronger contractions of the uterus. This is how positive feedback works to intensify the stimulus. This cycle will repeat until the baby is born the stretching of the uterus stops, and the positive feedback system then comes to a halt. 
Some other examples of positive feedback systems include the blood clotting reactions that stop blood loss and the inflammation response of the body's immune system. A healthy body is one where all of the homeostatic mechanisms are working efficiently and all of the body's controlled conditions are maintained within their normal ranges. Any disruption of homeostasis is called a homeostatic imbalance. If any of the body's negative or positive feedback mechanisms fail to work properly, this delicate balancing act of homeostasis can be thrown off and a disorder, disease, or death may occur. Aging is a gradual decline in homeostasis over one's lifetime. Any abnormal structure or function of the body is described using the general term disorder. A disease is a more specific term for an illness having a defined set of signs and symptoms. Diseases can be local, affecting a small region or one area of the body, like an ear infection, or they can be systemic and affect several areas or the entire body, like cardiovascular disease. Symptoms of a disease are subjective changes in body functions that are not visible to an observer, such as anxiety, headaches, and pain. Signs, on the other hand, are objective changes that are both observable and measurable, such as rashes, fevers, or high blood pressure. For practice, let's try to diagnose a disease using symptoms and signs. Can you name this disease from these four symptoms? Thirst, headache, nausea, and blurry vision. Pretty tough, huh? These symptoms could describe dozens of possible diseases. How about now, if we add in these two signs? A fasting plasma glucose test greater than 126 milligrams per deciliter of blood and a hemoglobin A1C test indicating high average blood glucose over 6 to 12 weeks. These are both signs of diabetes, and it is often easier to determine a disease from the more objective and quantifiable data that the signs provide. 